This lesson is working with the Macro Editor and Visual Basic for applications. You may remember from Introduction to Excel that macros are used to automate a task, something that you're going to be repeating over and over again. If you had to perform that task every day, it could become quite time consuming and subject to errors, your own errors. Macros solve those problems. We're going to review by creating a macro, and then we're going to actually look at it in the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to start by going to the Developer tab. Now you may notice that I don't have my Developer tab visible, so I simply go to the Office button, and then I go to Excel Options, and right on the Popular Options, the third checkbox down is Show Developer tab in the ribbon. So I'm just going to click on that, and I'm going to click on OK and my Developer tab has appeared. I'm going to click on the Developer tab so that I can see my coding group where I can record a macro. I'm going to record a simple macro that will put in my company name and address, including the city, state, and zip code. I'm going to start in A1. I'm going to click on Record Macro, and I'm going to assign a meaningful name. I'm just going to call mine Add company name. Macro names cannot contain spaces. You can only use A to Z letters, uh, upper or lower case is fine, 0 to 9 for numbers, and underscores. You can also create a shortcut key to run your macro. I'm going to do A as in add. Now you'll notice that Excel automatically added the shift key into that. It was, it did say Control plus A, now it says Control Shift plus A. Control A is a shortcut key used for selecting everything. So Excel didn't really want me to replace that, so it assigned it Control Shift and A. I'm going to click in the description. The description is optional. I'm just going to put in some documentation that helps me remember what this macro does. So it just enters my company name and address. I'm going to go ahead and store this macro in this workbook. Your choices are to store it in this workbook, a personal macro workbook, which is like a library of macros. You can use those macros in any of your workbooks, or I can insert it in a new workbook. I'm choosing to keep it in this workbook, and I'll only be able to use it here in this workbook. Now I'm going to click on OK. My macro recorder is on. In the lower left-hand corner, right next to the word ready, I can see a little blue square indicating a macro is currently running. Also, if I look up in the code group, I can see that it says stop recording. That indicates that something is currently recording. Now I'm going to go ahead and type the address in including my company name. I'll just put my company name. I hit enter to move to the next cell, and that will become part of my macro. And I'm going to end my macro here while I'm in A4. I'm just going to click on the Stop Recording in the Code group. Now to test my macro, I'm actually going to clear these cells by selecting them and pressing the Delete key. And I'm going to go back to A1, and I'm going to click on the Macros button in the Code group. And there's my Add Company Name, the name of my macro. I'm going to click on Run, and it runs my macro including my little typo here on California. I should have capitalized the A. It starts in A1. That's the cell I was in, and moves down all the way down to A3. Now watch what happens when I try to run my macro again, starting in A4. I'm just going to go back to Macros and run it like I did before. Did not get the desired results. My company name went into A4, but the address and the city, state, and zip 
are in A2 and A3. And actually, to make this even more visible, I'm going to go ahead and remove all of that, click in A4, and run the macro again. Still not doing what I thought it would do. And the reason is that we started in cell A1. My macro is doing exactly what I told it to do. Start in A1, put the company name in, and move down. But getting to A1 is not part of my macro. My macro started in the current cell. Originally, my current cell was A1. Now my current cell is A4. So we need to record the macro again, and this time we're going to use something called relative references. That way, Excel will do exactly what you're expecting it to do. I'm going to go ahead and remove this text, and I'm going to start in A1, just for fun, and I'm going to record this using relative references. I'm going to click on Record Macro, and I'm going to call this one Add Company Name and I'm just going to put a 2 after it, that way it'll distinguish it from my first one. I'm not going to take the time to assign a shortcut or a description. I'm going to click on OK. This time, before I start my actual typing, I'm going to click on Use Relative References. And notice when I clicked on it, it turned gold, meaning it's on. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to type in my company name. and the address, city, state, and zip. And when I get to A4, I'm going to stop my recording. And I can turn Use Relative References off. It stays on until I turn it off, whether I'm recording a macro or not. And now I'm going to clear all of this out and test it. I start in A1, I click on Macros, I'm going to go to Add Company Name 2 and click on Run. It works the same way it did before. But watch what happens when we run it from A4. I click on Macros, I click on Add Company Name 2, I run it. Ah, now it knows to move down starting with the current cell. So this time the moving down to the next cell was relative to the cell I started in instead of automatically starting at cell A2. Soon we'll be taking a look at these macros and you can see the difference between the two. But that's what using relative references can do for you. Originally my first macro remembered that I started in the current cell but then I moved down and it recorded it as A2. That's why when we ran it, the address went back to A2. This macro, using relative references, just remembers that we moved down. It doesn't register the A2 as part of the macro. So that's how relative references can help you out with macros.